Good morning. The grace of Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Uh, gracious good morning to you that are here and those that are watching over the internet. It has been our custom. Not many of you are wearing masks as you used to because we've been vaccinated. Those who have, if you feel comfortable and you want to pull it down, don't get up, but just kind of turn around and wave to your neighbors. Even those who don't have something, wave to your neighbors, see your friends. I see some faces I haven't seen in a while, so take a look around. As we welcome you on this Sunday, on the weekend of Memorial Day, we will be celebrating that with our singing. I think our first, uh, we have a special um, song to begin with, so there won't be special music. Um, uh, it's going to be Wayne and Tierney and Matt. Uh, they're going to start us off, and then if you watch the screen, it'll tell us when we come in. So just got to pay attention this morning. Also, just to remind you, I put this up here, two cents per meal. This is a two minutes per Neil, Sunday, you'll see that the bowl's there if you'd like to put it there on your way out. Uh, if you forgot, you can mail it in, or I will have that bowl out next week if you want to bring it next week. So you can do that as well. Also, we're beginning to wind down on some things. So um, the only really big thing going on this week is going to be our Wednesday prayer service, which you can get on the Internet by 5 o'clock. Uh, it's up all week, so if you'd like to be a part of that. I believe that they are all the announcements, so I am going to invite you now to join me in our call to worship. Mighty wind who danced over the deep and surveyed the shapeless void. Divine word who commanded unruly chaos and called forth light and life and opened us to new expressions of grace. Reform and refine us to be bearers of your blessing. Gather us in, then send us out our voices echoing creation song. How majestic is your name in all the earth. Let us pray. Holy God, source of all goodness, you gave your son for the life of the world and sent your spirit that your love might abide within us. Teach us how to love each other this day, that we may have life and have it abundantly with you in Christ and through the Holy Spirit. Amen.
join me in our prayer. Almighty God, it's with grateful hearts that we remember the men and women who gave their lives in hope of worldly peace and unity among all of humanity. Bless their families and fill them with your strength and peace. Inspire each of us to use our gifts, our time, our talents, our treasure to work for peace and justice as we seek to end violence and conflict around the world and to proclaim and live the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ we do pray. Amen. At this time, I'd like to invite the children to come forward if they'd like to for a few minutes. All right. Oh, my glass. I got to turn me down. Oh, it's the mask, isn't it? Hold on. Let's do this. That was really loud. This is Julian. Julian, that's Amelia, and that's Evie. All right, you guys get to hang. Is that better? Yeah, that's better. All right, so thank you for my glass. I was looking for them. So look what I have. What is this? It's a present. Have you ever gotten a present? Yeah, well, Julian's getting ready to get a lot of presents because his birthday's coming up, isn't it? You think you're going to get some presents? Yeah, you think it'll be wrapped? Probably not in pink, maybe. Maybe in blue or something. So when do you get presents? You get presents at birthdays? When are some other times you get presents? Holidays, Holidays Christmas. Sometimes, you know, there was a couple times my mom and dad would just give me something now they're clear blue, a present now they're clear blue. Boy, was that a nice gift. So how do you feel when you get presents? This makes you feel good, and then you're thankful for what you get, aren't you? So inside here, let's see what we have. A box. So I'm going to open this box and see what we have. So today we're going to talk about a scripture in here, and Ms. Allison's going to kind of play on it in a different way, but we're going to talk about a scripture about a man who went to talk to Jesus. And Jesus, he wanted to know all about what Jesus is all about. And so Jesus tells him that, that God loves him and that God loves all creation. So look what I have in here. For God so loved the world... So God sent us a gift. Did you know that God sent you a gift? Did you know that God sent you a gift? What's that gift? The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ isn't. So God sent the Spirit out of, what's the little red thing? Out of love. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall never perish but have eternal life. So God sent, gave us the most precious gift that we could ever have, because God wants us to enjoy all the goodness in life. That doesn't mean that every day is going to be easy, and it doesn't mean we're always going to get away, and it doesn't mean that we're not going to hurt, because those things happen because we're human. And sometimes human beings do things to each other, and our feelings get hurt. But who's going to always be there to care for us? God, because he sent his only son, Jesus, because God loves us so much so i just want you to know i hope you know that god loves you that god loves you so so much so we give god thanks for this gift and i want you to think of some ways that you can thank god you know when you're grateful you you tell people when they bring you presents you say oh i love that present thank you so much you got to think of some way to let god know how much you are appreciative of what god has done for you and what god will continue to do for you all right so we'll say a little prayer for those who want to stay here, you can. For those who want to go with Miss Allison, she'll go and take you to children's time, okay? So can, can you say a prayer with me real quickly? Put your hands together. All right. Dear God, Dear God we, thank you we thank you for the precious gift, the precious gift of, your son Jesus, of your son Jesus, who reminds us, reminds us just, how much just how much you love each one of us. One of us. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Amen. Thank you.
So each Sunday at worship, we take a moment to remember our baptism, pour the waters of baptism, because we know that it is significant in each and every day of our lives, that we have been claimed and called and cleansed, and we live in grace. So, in this moment, remember your baptism and be thankful, for we belong to the living God. Let us pray. O great and holy God, as we gather here, we can spill your spirit of love and grace and peace wash over us. And we pray, Lord, that as we go out in the world, we will take that love and grace and peace as we continue to spread the good news, the word, that you love all of creation and that you want all of us to have abundant and eternal life. We thank you for the gift of this day, this Sabbath, that reminds us to pause and give thanks for all that we have been blessed with, for family and friends, for children with laughter and questions, for youth, for young and old, for men and women, for dreams and visions, for hopes. Great and holy God, you have given us so much around us to fill us with joy and the many delights of sounds and sights and smells and taste, but most of all, the relationships we have with one another and those within our circle. As we gather here on this Sunday, just before the summer kicks in, Almighty God, may we be reminded of what it means to be the church, what the community of faith is, a place that is inclusive and whole and holy, a place that welcomes and doesn't discriminate, a place that stands for justice and mercy and peace, a place that must ask for forgiveness as well as give forgiveness, a place that sings songs from the bottom of its heart, a place that loves children and youth and adults alike, a place that opens its door and its campus so all may come, a place that celebrates the gift of your Son, Jesus the Christ. So as we gather on this day, Almighty God, may your Holy Spirit fill us, fill us, empower us, embolden us to proclaim in words and deeds the goodness and grace that comes from knowing you, of being your child, a disciple. And so we give you thanks and ask that you hear these are prayers for wholeness and healing, prayers for comfort, prayers for direction and discernment. And we ask that you hear the prayer which you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank all of you for what you do in supporting this church. It allows us to do the ministry and mission and so you'll see that there's different ways in which you can give. We always have the offering plate out here and also the, today we have the two cents per meal. Thank you.
So before I read the scripture, I want to do a real quick rundown of where we are in John's gospel. Uh, the, the author begins by writing prologue. In the beginning, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And so then John the Baptist appears and who bears witness to Jesus. Then Jesus gathers the disciples. Then he performs his first miracle. Remember where and when? You got it. The wedding at Cana of Galilee. Then comes the cleansing of the temple, and he drives out the cattle and the sheep before turning his attention to the money changers and instructs those who are selling doves to get out and to stop making God's house a marketplace. Then comes Nicodemus. And he was the Pharisee and a significant leader of the Jews. And he comes to Jesus at night. Remember that? Now, Nicodemus calls Jesus rabbi or teacher, and, and that doesn't sound all that important because it was a common kind of identification in the gospel. But when a Pharisee and a ruler of the Jews calls him teacher or rabbi, it indicates more significance. And then Nicodemus confesses his belief that Jesus comes from God because no one could do what he does if he wasn't from God. And so that's where we are in our story, so let's pray. Holy God, speak to us, speak to our fear and uncertainty, speak to us of the hope and peace needed for today, speak to us of the love and faith that always sustains and as the scripture is read and the word is proclaimed, let our hearts and our minds be open so we can listen well to what you say. So quiet us now as we sit expectant to hear, for we do pray, amen. John 3, verses 1 through 21. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews, he came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. And Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of flesh is flesh, and what is born of spirit is spirit. Don't be astonished that I say to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, are you a teacher of Israel and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can I tell you about heavenly things. No one has ascended to heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be list, lifted up that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God, and this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For those who do evil, the light and for those who do evil, hate the light 
and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed, but those who do what is true come to the light so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. For the word of God in Scripture, for the word of God among us, and for the word of God within us, we say, thanks be to God. So let me start by stating the obvious. John 3.16 is one of the most beloved verses ever. And in Bible Gateway, it, it, they declare it as the most quoted verse in the Bible. And it's one of those verses that, at least for me, I learned at a very early age. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's how I learned it. And that's gospel, and we can't let go of that. Yet, it's very familiar. So it almost becomes difficult to glean a living and relevant message for us today. So has anybody heard of a, a guy named Roland Stewart? He's also known as the Rainbow Man, and that's because he wore multicolor wigs. Take a look. All right, now just keep that image. And he's famous because he's the guy that used to hold up John 3:16 signs at sporting events. He had an uncanny knack of uh, being in the perfect spot for the television cameras when they came on 
And NFL football games, he positioned himself in the end zone and held the sign up just as the kick sailed through the uprights. In baseball games, he appeared somewhere behind home plate. At one of the Masters golf tournaments, he even held the sign over the right shoulder of Jack Nicholas as he teed off. So Roland was active. Um, John 3.16's sign holder, I guess you could say, from the late 70s into 1992. Haven't seen him for a long time, have you? That's because his life took a very, very awful and tragic turn. It involved a hostage situation and the Los Angeles uh, SWAT team. He is currently serving three consecutive life terms in prison. So we don't really hear too much after 1992. Then about uh, 2009, there's a young quarterback who wrote John 316 under the eye black, and that's the stuff that the athletes put under their eyes. The newest Jacksonville Jaguar, right? So it's foundational verse. It's the gospel in 27 words. And because John 3.16 is so familiar, my thoughts were even more disorganized than they usually are, so I needed a little bit of help in the message today. So I googled John 3.16 sermons. And after reading six boring to very boring sermons, I finally thought I hit the jackpot there was one entitled The Ultimate Sermon on John 3.16. Had three questions, had three answers. And a conclusion, which the preacher renamed The Verdict. So, I can assure you that it wasn't that ultimate. And I can assure you that my strategy to Google John 3.16 sermons was not very helpful or relevant for, you, for us as believers. In one of the commentaries I read, it stated, this is a story about how any one of us might reject the light offered to us because of the way it exposes what is dark in and around us. To believe this good news in a way that brings salvation requires more than believing that, it requires trusting in. And to trust in Jesus is not simply to believe something about what happened long ago, but it is to let our own lives be transformed by the Jesus we encounter in this story. It's so interesting that Nicodemus actually asked the right question to the only person who could give him the answer. How? How do I let you, Jesus, become real for me? Now, as those who have already said yes to believing, Our question would be more like, how is, a God, how is God alive for me today? And that's a great question to ponder because God's aliveness drives our attitudes, our choices, our actions. Jesus says, to, says this in the passage, people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light so that they may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. To do what is right, what is true, means to live, to live up what you, to live up to what you know. 
And what we know is that goodness is stronger than evil. What we know is love is stronger than hate. Light is stronger than darkness. Life is stronger than death. We know what it means to serve others in need, who have needs. We know the value of the fruit of the Spirit in our daily lives. We know how to welcome strangers. We know how to live Christ-like lives. To do what is true means we put our feet back on higher ground. And as we do what is true, we journey with superpower that enables us to walk together in our adversity, to walk together under the constant demands of a culture that dismisses our claims of God's aliveness. And we know what is true and we have opportunity to embody God's aliveness each and every day. C.L. James tells a fable in the, to see a world in a grain of sand of a wise old cat who noticed the kitten chasing its tail. Why are you chasing your tail? asked the wise old cat. And the kitten replied, I have learned that the best thing for a cat is joy, and joy is in my tail. Therefore, I'm chasing it. And when I catch it, I shall have joy, to which the old wise cat responded, my son, I had paid attention to the goings-on in the universe, and I too have judged that joy is in my tail. But what I have noticed is that whenever I chase after it, it keeps running away from me. And when I go about my business, it just seems to come after me wherever I go. That's kind of how I feel about this passage. When I go about my business, as I embody God's aliveness, and regardless of where I go or what circumstance I, I encounter, I have the joy of this passage, of a life that is abundant, full, and a life that is eternal. It goes with me. I can't get away from God's love, neither can you. In fact, I don't want to get away from God's love. Friends, be alive. Be alive and do what you know God desires of you. Amen? Let's pray. Holy God, do your work in us now as we prepare to leave this sacred space in each other. And help us to take your love with us in all that we do. For indeed we pray in Christ's name. Amen. All right, let's join in our affirmation of faith. Be up on the screen in just a few seconds. Let's boldly declare what we believe. We believe in God who lights the dawn and rolls away each stone of doubt, who surprises us with incredible gifts of family and friends, silence and laughter, who raises us from sadness and despair to the possibilities of blessing and joy. We believe in Jesus, friend of the poor and searcher for the lost, who comes to us in our grief and calls us by name. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the gentle messenger of God, who guides us in the dark, beckons us to do good, and watches over us with tender compassion. We believe that we are Easter people and have been put here to proclaim the good news of God's persistent and redeeming love. Amen. Our, what, what verses are we singing in our one, three, and five? So if you're using your hymn book, our final hymn is for all the saints, verses one, three, and five.
So receive the blessing of the morning and the week. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And may the Lord's favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. And may the Lord's presence go with you, before you, and behind you, and beside you, and around you, and within you. For the Lord is with you in the morning, and in the evening, in your coming, and your going, in your weeping, and your rejoicing. The Lord is for you. Live in the favor of the Lord. Amen. Thank you.